Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Mr. Farmer. You're looking ravishing as usual. That is so sweet. You, you're very handsome. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you know what? Tonight, we got some stuff that's just absolutely wonderful. When I was a yes. kid, beans, soup beans. You still love beans. I still love beans. Yes. You know, for country folks, beans were a staple. Oh, yeah. Beans and cornbread. Mm -hmm. A couple years ago, I was up in the woods in the deer stand. Mm -hmm. So cold. I, I was like freezing. Cold. Hadn't had anything to eat, and I was sitting up there thinking, what would I like? And I thought, I want some bean with bacon soup. Now, not just soup beans. I'm talking right. bean with bacon. When you're a kid, there's a very popular soup company. won't name their name here. Right. I, I love their bean with bacon soup and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yummy. Nothing like it. That's right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. You know exactly I what do. I'm talking about. So I came back here, and I thought, I want to make that. Now, that's a long, drawn-out process. Right. So I thought, how can I have bean with bacon soup on demand without all the additives and preservatives right. and all that stuff. And so I actually can some. Mm -hmm. Here's some video of us a few years back canning bean with bacon soup. So you had it ready on demand. Ready on demand. That's right. But I did the same thing today. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about bean with bacon soup. Didn't have any can, mm -hmm. but I thought, how can I do this? On a fairly quick basis. Because right, it's usually all day when you make it. It's all day. Yeah. Now we're not turning this into a pressure cooking show, but yeah. oh my goodness. It made you happy, didn't it? It made me so <laughs> happy to know. Typically when you do beans, mm -hmm. it's a process. Right. Some people soak them overnight. I used to soak them overnight. Then I'd cook them for an hour. I would bring them to a boil, mm -hmm. cover them, and then let them set. And then that starts the process of the cooking mm -hmm. for hours right. and seasoning as you go along. And I'm always starving smelling that for hours. She's starving. That's right. We've done soup beans over an open fire mm -hmm. a long time yeah. ago. I mean, like almost 10 years ago. Now, do you know if northern beans and navy beans are the same thing? I do not. They are not the same thing. A lot of okay. people think they are. Now, they're interchangeable in recipes because they're about the same size, about the same shape. Navy beans are a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. but they have more fiber than northern beans. Really? Yes. 19 grams of fiber per cup hmm. on the navy beans. Now, I like the northern beans because they cook up quicker. Yeah. So what are we going to do tonight, Mrs. Farmer? What are you going to do? I'm going to make bean with bacon soup <laughs> okay. in the pressure cooker. Now, what does pressure cooking do? It reduces your time, and it takes all those ingredients in puts mm -hmm. under pressure and all those flavors really bind together well and you have this heavenly smell in your kitchen and before you know it you got wonderful stuff. You can eat quicker, I like it. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Farmer, I'm gonna get this thing started. Okay. But tell us, there's nothing more Kentucky than what you're making right here. Right. What are you making tonight for dessert? Well it's an apple pie but it's got bourbon in it, it's got raisins, cranberries and pecans. So apple bourbon pie yes. tonight. Now the bourbon basically just soaks in the raisin and right. cranberry. Gives it a good flavor. And, oh my goodness. Gotta have I'm dessert. just telling you. You got this and you got this. What more and then need? we're gonna make some cornbread in between because you gotta have cornbread yeah, with you gotta your beans. Have cornbread. So this is a good country show tonight and let's get started, Mrs. Farmer. Alrighty. So we're gonna start right here. Alright. I'll just chop that up a little bit for you. Yeah, give me, make it about four pieces, that'd be perfect. Is that small enough, Mrs. Perfect. Farmer? I'll do it in sections of two. Now that's a lot of onion. I'm gonna put most of that in there. I like onion. And those are chopped very finely. You don't have to have huge batches of onion. Now, Mrs. Farmer, I'm gonna start giving you some carrots. Now we use three or four good sized carrots because I like carrots and I think they really accentuate the beans and, and the sugar that's they in do. the carrots really makes a nice, sweet, wonderful addition to our bean with bacon soup. Was that it, Mrs. Yep. Farmer? Perfect. Look good? Beautiful. That was nice. All right, so we have... Lots of carrots. Lots of carrots. Lots of onions. Now I'm gonna come back with some celery. And let's say a half a cup of celery. So this is not just a bean soup per se. This is a wonderful vegetable soup. Oh yeah. But really, if you look at bean with bacon soup, Think about this, as you cook more and more, you're gonna start analyzing things. Mm -hmm. You're gonna to go to a restaurant and you're gonna say, ooh, is that thyme? What yeah. is that that just, what is that smoky flavor? Ooh, what is that? Yeah. Then you start breaking that down, you bring that home and incorporate that into your own things. Let your tongue and your nose work together right. and come home and try these things. 
So I know there's the smoky flavor, I know mm -hmm. there's the onion flavor, I know there's the celery flavor. So I'm gonna enhance that even more as we go along with our beans. Now the biggest pain when you're dealing with bean soup mm -hmm. is getting your beans ready. Right. We're just gonna take these beans, we're gonna put them in a colander, and we're gonna rinse them. Any irregularities or anything that's not that good, we'll just pop it out. Just rinse that off real quick. So we have about two cups, a little over two cups okay. of our northern beans. Mm -hmm. Not the same as navy beans. That's right. But close. I'm going to go ahead and put those in there. Dry. Now, Mrs. Farmer, we have been saving our chicken broth. And we have right here about five and a half to six cups. Now, remember, you want to have plenty of liquid in here because if that cooks down, you're going to have a bunch of dry beans. That's right. You don't want that. So, what am I going to flavor this with? Hmm. Now, remember I said the smoky flavor. Mm -hmm. You got to get that smoky flavor. So one thing I'm going to do right off the bat is take some liquid smoke hickory. I'm going to pour that in there. I'm going to put quite a bit because, you know, a little dab will do you. But I really want that smoky oh, flavor yeah, to come out. Oh, I smell that. I smell that. Now. Along with that. What do you got there? Like six pieces of bacon? Five or mm -hmm. six? About six pieces. Oh, I, want, yeah. I want a lot of bacon there. Yeah. Now I want these pieces cut up fairly small mm -hmm. because it's going to come floating to the top when we're done. And so our bacon goes. Boom, boom, boom. Now, thank goodness old Glenn didn't get all our pepper. Got a little bit left. Got a little bit left. I like pepper a lot. And you I like do pepper too. a lot. You can't. So, I'm going to put much. a little more in there than you probably would. Then, I'm going to take any seasoning that has celery seed in it that you mm -hmm. might like. Yeah. Um, use a additive or a salty flavoring that has celery seed. And I put this together myself. It's just got some onion powder, salt, a little bit of garlic, and some celery seed. Something else I like for most soups is thyme, and this is no different. I'm gonna put a little bit of thyme in here, some dried thyme. One other thing I'm gonna do, this may sound strange, but I'm gonna use some poultry seasoning that has paprika in it. Hmm. Now you think about the salt. Yeah. You don't want it to be too salty. And you're gonna get some salt from your bacon, and I always, always, I've just got some chicken bouillon cubes here. Automatic stocky. Right, delicious. Flavor going on there. It adds so much. I'm gonna put two to three of the chicken bouillon cubes in here. With your regular bean soup, you don't have a reddish tomato puree in there. Right. You do in bean with bacon soup. You have mm -hmm. that tomato taste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our tomato paste, and then we're going to take a little bit of ketchup as well. Now I'll sweeten it up just a little bit. You'd be shocked to know how much sugar it's in ketchup. is in ketchup. Yeah. But I find that that sweetness really bumps it up a notch. And there's something else when you're eating bean with bacon soup, and you may have seen this on our last week's show this, the week before, just a little bit of red wine vinegar. You like red wine vinegar. It's going to get that yeah. little tart taste that you get there. So we got everything in there, Mrs. Farmer? I think you do. Now I want to make sure these are done done, so I'm going to go about an hour, maybe an hour five, hour ten minutes on this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's think, soaking overnight, cooking four or five hours all day, it's, it can be a 10, 12 hour oh, process. Yeah. One hour. Let's see how it does. I know it's going to be hour. good. One <laughs> hour. All right, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Mrs. Farmer. Yes? This is pure Kentucky. Yes, it is. That's good stuff. Now, we're not putting enough bourbon in here where you have to worry about driving. We're right? going to cook it. It's going to cook. We're going to cook it yeah. up. Just like a tablespoon. But let me tell you what, when these... When these cranberries and raisins soak that up, mm -hmm. oh, I'm telling you, this is out of this world. I'm going to stand back and watch you put this scrumptious thing together. What do you, where do you get started? On your apples? Well, you know what? We're going to get the cranberries. I actually have cranberries and I have raisins that we want we're to soak. We're going to soak those. I actually have more than you said, like a tablespoon. I have four tablespoons of bourbon. But it, like you said, it's going to cook down because we need a tablespoon for each. I'll put a tablespoon on the raisins, put a tablespoon on the cranberries. Just stir that up. More. Let that kind of soak in. The rest of this we're going to save for on the apples. So now I got, we have the Granny Smith apples. Yeah. We're going to do it ourselves. Best for pie. Yes. And we're going to do, I'm going to do six of these. All right. The most work was the apples. I got the six apples. And I've been, I put a little lemon juice. Grandma always said to do that to keep them from turning Turn on around. you. They turn quick. Yes. And I like the flavor of the lemon. All right. Now remember the two tablespoons we had left? Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and pour those on the apples. All right. Stir that in a little bit. All right, I got three quarters to almost a cup of sugar here. All right. Two tablespoons of flour. Gotcha. 
I have a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a, I put a little bit of nutmeg on there. I just kind of shook a little, maybe an eighth. And this is going to go on our apples. I think you've done this before, Mrs. Farmer. I've done it a couple times. All right, I think I need a bigger bowl. All right. Because I'm going to add all this stuff together here. So it's a little bit bigger. So we got our cinnamon. Get all this in here. I'm kind of excited. This is this. this is a pure Kentucky meal. Bean with bacon soup mm -hmm. and bourbon apple pecan pie. Are you kidding me? I know. I got the raisins. With raisins and cranberries. All right, I'm going to use my chopper to cut these pecans. I got right. half a cup. You could buy them chopped. I like to chop them. It's fun. Don't right. need electricity. That's right. Can we pour? Go ahead and pour those in. All of them? Yes. And this is what we're going to put in our pie. All right. And I've already got my pie shell ready. All right. A little earlier. And I've actually made a top for the pie, too, all earlier that we're going to go ahead and put on top. So let's go ahead and put this in. You know, something else I like to do, too, is put a little butter on top, because Grandma used to do that. So I'm going to grab some butter for that. Grandmas are never wrong. That's right. You want to smooth that in, and I'm going to grab some butter. You know, we love grandmas, not only because they're grandmas, because they're wise. That's right. And they have been around the block, and I want to hear everything grandmas have to say. I want to hear everything grandpas have to say. I want their friendship. I want their kinship. I want to know everything about them. Yes. You know, if you have a grandparent, you need to sit down with them. You need to get a video camera, your mm -hmm. phone, whatever, right. and talk with them. Because so many times, you think about your grandfather. Mm -hmm. When you were a kid running around, he wanted right. to tell you stories about Greece. Too busy. Think about my grandfather when he was telling me stories mm -hmm. about the farm. And I actually recorded some of my grandfather on a, on a oh, little cassette neat. tape. Yeah. Him talking about, he made up these fantastic stories. One of them was, they said he'd hook the Tom Turkey up to a wagon and he'd pull the kids to the market <laughs> and back. <laughs> That'd be fun. Now, that was him telling tall tales, but we've got that yeah, on tape somewhere. I hope neat. I can find that. Well, that's something I remember her doing. I do, I do remember some of her cooking that but, I paid attention to. Now I'm going to get my top pie shell. You know what you need, Miss Farmer? One more piece of butter right there. Do you think so? Yeah. I can do it. Let's put one more piece. A little bit of butter. How's that? That's beautiful. All right. That already smells delicious. I know. It. Let's put a top on it. I already Let's made this. It. So I'm going to cover it. All right. Does that look good? Mm -mm. Oh, Miss Farmer, I'm excited. Let me a couple little slits You know, vent there. it. Yeah, let's get a couple little vent marks in here. Some people are fancy, but we'll just put them in here. We'll put an X in the middle. How's that? Beautiful. I got the oven at 425. And we're going to have to let this cook about 50 minutes. So it'll be ready maybe after we eat our meat. 50 beans. minutes. 50 minutes, yes. Egg wash. Yes. All right, egg wash. I like to use the egg white. It makes it nice and shiny. Yeah. Brown. Get rid of that. And why don't you get that little brush out? Brush? Yeah. That's something she always did too. Makes it kind of makes it pretty and glisten. Mm-hmm. All right, you can't help but have a little more sugar. That's I mean, be it doesn't it doesn't hurt. All right, because we can do what we want. There we go. I think Beautiful. it's ready. Can we open it up? Yes, thank you. Now, if you notice, we put that on the pan because pies are notorious for leaking out yes. stuff on the bottom of the oven. All right, so we're going to take a break, get this stuff cleaned up. Then we need to get our cornbread going. Now, I like my cornbread different times, different ways. There are so many people who are purists in their cornbread ways. Oh, you can't put sugar in it. Somebody the other day got really mad at me because they saw a recipe that I used. Mom would put sugar in her cornbread. Yeah. Well, you're not from Kentucky. I'm like... Our family's been in Kentucky probably since it was Virginia. Yeah. If I want to use my mama's recipe and put a little sugar in there, I can do it. They're not going to kick me out of the state. You do what you want. Most of the time we do regular cornbread, no sugar. Tonight we're going to do... What do you need? We're going to put some chow chow in our cornbread. Oh, we're going to put some good. onions in our cornbread. We've done a variation of this before, but with this, with these things in here and a little sugar, mm -hmm. No, we won't get kicked out of the state. You might want to try it sometime. It's because when you're eating it along with Gotta have it. your beans, it's fabulous. Delicious. All right, Ms. Warmer. All right, now we're just going to make a basic cornbread recipe. Now, here's just the basic recipe itself. If we follow our friend Sally's All right. method, here's her cornbread recipe. That's just the cornbread. Then we're going to tell you what we're going to add to it. Okay, there's actually a cup and three quarters of plain cornmeal to right. start. We're going to add an egg, and we're going to add one and a half cups of buttermilk. Got to have buttermilk. That's right. 
the teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Check. Check. And then whatever else you want to add to that. Then here's what we're going to add to that. Once we get all the wet ingredients in, we're going to take some of our green tomato relish. You can use chow chow, green tomato relish, whatever you want in beans, but you gotta have some. Oh, you gotta good. have some. I'm gonna put it in, in my soup beans too. Now think about this, your soup beans are salty. Mm -hmm. And for those who have never tried a little sugar or a little something sweet in your cornbread, you, you that. mix that sweet mm -hmm. with the salty, Yum. you've got magic. Now <laughs> you can put regular cornbread in it too, but there is no law in Kentucky. I looked it up. Okay. All right, anyway, so back to our recipe. Go ahead and get everything mixed together and I'm going to put a little bit of my stuff in. Alrighty. So you put your egg, you put your dry ingredients in, and then I'm going to put your buttermilk. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to take some onion, some sweet onion, and you talk about going well oh, yeah. with this cornbread. And then you put a big slab of real butter on oh. your cornbread, Mrs. Farmer. Guess who's happy? Me. I'm happy. You're yeah. happy. And Kelly's happy. Want all these? Yep. So we got some onions. Got a little bit of green tomato relish. She's going to mix up in there. Oh, that's special. Now, for just a little heat to go along with our sweet, we can take some of these jalapenos and I'm going to cut them up. These are pickled now, these are already ready to go. Miss Farmer, we're ready. How about some sugar? Oh, yeah. Just a little bit? Just a tiny bit of sugar. All right. Just a tiny bit, Miss Farmer. No, let's mix not it. much at all. all right. Just a tiny bit of sugar. Over what Remember, you think. Remember, there's no law against it. You know, so many people are starting to get into cooking, and there are no rules. Right. If you like it and it's good for you, you knock yourself out. If you want to put salamanders mm -hmm. in there, you can do you it. You want to put <laughs> toad frogs in there? You could do that. That There's sounds no really yummy. Walls against. I wouldn't do that. But you know what? Until you've tried something mm -hmm. else, don't knock it. All right, let's do a switcheroo. Let's pour okay. that in a pan. Okay. Pull the pie out and then put that in. Sounds good. We're getting close. Yes, we are. Cornbread. Well, yummy. Look at the pie. Yummy. We ain't scared. No, it smells good in here. But you know what? We have a lot of musicians that are friends mm -hmm. and a lot of folks who really add to our show, yeah. such as the Moron Brothers. Connor Thomas, a great guitarist. Oh, yeah. We met a new friend mm -hmm. that's absolutely wonderful, and she's going to sing us an old, old song. Her name is Emmy Sunshine. Listen to this wonderful traditional song and her wonderful version of it. Emmy Sunshine. <laughs> 